Okay, hi guys. Um, my name is Lauren and I work for the Illinois Student Assistance Commission. I'm based in the Wabatsi Community College District, which is in the Aurora area. And I'll let my colleague introduce themselves too. Thank you. Uh, my name is Hannah Rose Budzinski uh, and I'm the Region 1 Coordinator, so I'm in the kind of North Central area of Illinois. And before that, I worked in the Rock Valley College District. And today, as you can kind of see back here, uh, we're going to talk about money today and just how to really stay on a budget and uh, have some good money management skills while also having a good time in college. Yeah, so with that, we'll first talk about uh, cost of attendance. So I'll let you take it away. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so when uh, we say the term cost of attendance, we want to make sure everyone knows what we're talking about. So cost of attendance is the total cost of going to college for one year, aka two semesters. Um, within cost of attendance, there are two subcategories of costs. One is indirect and the other is direct costs. So the names kind of imply what exactly they're about. So those direct costs are going to be those ones that you pay directly to the college. So that'd be things like tuition uh, and fees. And tuition is, you know, the cost of your actual classes you're taking. And also any dorm room fees if you're living in the dorms. And sometimes, oh, sorry, sometimes cost of attendance can be different for different people. I know mm -hmm. the college I went to, if you were in like the business program, you had a higher tuition rate than people who were in different programs. Um, we'll talk about, well, the purpose of this uh, live today is to talk about ways to save money. Um, and the direct and indirect costs, indirect costs especially, don't always have to be exactly what you see on mm -hmm. a college's financial aid offer or on a financial aid website. Uh, so one of the biggest ways to lower your cost of attendance would be through financial aid. And financial aid is money that is borrowed, given, or earned from various sources. That financial aid can come in the form of grants, which are amounts of money given to you, typically based on your financial need. Uh, you're also applying, or you can also apply for scholarships, which are another type of free money that is given to you for a variety of reasons, but typically it's, we think of ones for grades, athletics, performing arts, or in some cases, even just personal characteristics or the community you live in. You also um, can get something called federal work study, which is a program where you are essentially working a job at a college or somewhere else. And the money you earn from that is considered financial aid that you can use to cover some of those costs that you have and uh, student loans, which are amounts of money you borrow and pay back later on. So it's not exactly free because you are having to pay those back later on, but those are all ways that you can help bring that cost of attendance down and ways that you can uh, save some money to pay for school, at least during college. Uh, and when it comes to financial aid, there are applications you can fill out for those. The probably the most well-known one is the free application for federal student aid or the FAFSA. Uh, in the state of Illinois, we also have the alternative application for Illinois financial aid for qualifying undocumented students. So if you fill out those financial aid applications, you are applying for consideration for different types of financial aid. For the FAFSA, you are applying for consideration for grants, um, loans, and work study. Um, in the alternative app, you're applying for consideration for the Illinois MAP grant. Um, definitely when it comes to scholarships, start with those local ones. So the ones that are found in your local community or maybe even your high school, because those are the ones where they may have less people applying for them. So they're not as competitive as some scholarships that may be from a national organization or a national um, competition type of thing. Yeah. And I really do want to stress that last point of uh, applying to those local scholarships first. When I was uh, in college, I applied both to national and local scholarships, and I basically only won the local scholarships. You know, of course, you do have that uh, chance to actually win those, you know, larger national ones. But once again, as Lauren said, you just have a much higher chance of actually winning those ones and getting money from your local community is also just a great resource to, you know, use the people that you've grown up with. And also sometimes colleges um, not sometimes, pretty much all colleges are going to have their own scholarships you can apply for, whether that is through an academic department. For example, if you're an engineering major, you might get or can might apply for an engineering scholarship, um, or maybe they just have scholarships in general for female students, um, or just ones that are open to anyone at that school, um, depending on a few different factors. Yeah. Um, and so uh, next, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can reduce that cost of attendance that we talked about. Um, with cost of attendance, you know, there's once again a couple ways you can reduce that. Uh, the main way that I reduced my total cost of attendance was by filling out what's called an insurance waiver. 
Um, and with what an insurance waiver is, is that a lot of colleges, whether you go to a private college, public college, two-year, four-year, whatever it may be, uh, they tend to offer their students insurance. And the fee is included in like the mandatory fees section. Um, if you have insurance either through your parents, through a job you have, or another private source that just isn't your college itself, uh, you can sign a waiver, you know, saying that you already have health insurance, and then you can get a refund of some of those fees. Um, and of course, it depends on the school. They may have different ways that you can do that. Uh, I went to the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and with that, I just signed up through an online portal, signed a couple documents, sent my insurance card, like a picture of it, um, and I got about $2,000 back. Um, I know, Lauren, we were talking earlier, and you mm -hmm. got a couple hundred dollars back, but whether it be a couple hundred bucks or a couple thousand bucks, you know, that's still money that you can save if you do have the privilege of having insurance. Yeah, I did. So we do have a question that came in. Um, so um, we do have a question about if tuition costs is negotiable or does every student pay the same amount? Um, I would say typically with tuition that is billed to everybody. Um, so typically students might be billed the same amount, um, but depending on what kind of financial aid they got um, or maybe a tuition waiver, which sometimes happens, um, that cost may be different for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, there are I don't want to say it's necessarily negotiable, um, but anytime there's a situation that is going on in your, in your family or going on in a student's life that can't be reflected on a financial aid application, it's always worth talking to the financial aid office at the school they plan to attend um, just to see if there's any other financial aid they may qualify for. Um, but to answer your question, um, I don't want to say flat out yes or no that tuition mm -hmm. is negotiable. Um, I would just say um, tuition or the cost of attendance at a college can be reduced um, and not, less, I guess, redu reduced in the sense that students might get financial aid to help cover some of that. Yeah. So just to clarify what Lauren was mm -hmm. saying, tuition may not be negotiable, but that financial aid package you get uh, can be negotiable, which can, you know, reduce the cost of your tuition. Uh, and we've got another question. Um, are tuition waivers and insurance waivers the same thing? And I'll actually talk about that. Um, so they are actually different things, and I'm glad that you brought up tuition waivers uh, so tuition waivers are typically things that you can get through a job where your job will either pay for the tuition themselves or they'll give you a reimbursement. So like you might put some money up front, then they'll pay you back later. Um, and that's another way to reduce your total cost of attendance. Uh, some common jobs that people have that allow them to get that tuition waiver or room and board waivers is uh, residential advisors. They're also known as RAs and they're people in dorm rooms who like are kind of in charge of like a hall or like a level of a hall. Um, so, you know, you have a lot of responsibility with that. You typically have to make billboards and do events and just deal with anything that happens in the hall. But once again, you typically get free to not free tuition, but free room and board. So free rent basically and free food, which can really help a lot of students. Um, you know, here at Isaac Corps, we also get tuition, uh, waivers for our job and if you're in the military they can pay for just about all of your college experience kind of depending on what you do um so that is a good question but there is a difference between tuition waivers and insurance waivers yeah an insurance waiver would mean um a lot most a lot of colleges will offer a health insurance plan for their students because they recognize that maybe students don't have health insurance but they want them to have it while they're a student there um, but in some cases students may already have a health insurance plan like through their parents or maybe through a different source and if students already have that and they don't need their uh, school's insurance, they can get that waived. So yeah. they're not paying like $1,000, $900 to get health insurance that they don't need because they already have it. Yeah, you don't need to double up. Mm -hmm. um, so just to move on a little bit more, um, when you're thinking about reducing cost of attendance, you can also uh, reduce your cost of attendance by picking a better housing plan. So with a housing plan, you can either live in the dorms or you can live in an off-campus apartment. And in general, dorms, you know, those are university owned housing apartments. Typically, um, you typically have one to four roommates in dorms um, and they tend to be significantly more expensive than if you were to rent. Now, if you're, you know, let's say you go to school in Chicago or another really big metropolitan area, it may cost less to go to the dorms. But just in general, renting can save you literally thousands of dollars a year. Um, so that's what I did for three of my four years in college. I rented. That saved me, I think, about $20,000 just right off the bat doing that. Um, but just know, you know, if you're renting a place rather than paying dorm fees, you know, with a dorm, you pay everything up front. 
uh, just one single payment, kind of a lump sum. Whereas if you're renting, you, that's typically a monthly thing. So you have to show a little bit more responsibility. Um, and people who rent typically also have like a job that they're working on the side. Mm-hmm. And with, I do want to add, there's also payment plans you can do. Yep. So um, payment plans are things that colleges, um, similar to like a credit card bill or a car payment, you would pay a certain amount of money over the span of like three or four months. So that way you're not having to pay $6,000 for one semester all up front. You could just split it up into different payments. And the, I think it, even in my, in my experience, they also had like the housing payments that I was paying grouped into that Um payment plan. So I would always recommend looking into payment plans at at colleges. Um, If you have any questions, financial aid offices would definitely be able to help with that. Uh, I personally used a payment plan and it helped a lot. (laughs) So I would definitely recommend looking into them. Um, If you know, like maybe paying a lot of money up front isn't possible, but I can break it into smaller chunks and do it that way instead. Um, So next we'll talk about um, equipment and textbooks. So you're a student, you're still going to need some kind of school supplies, even in college. Uh, It might not look the same as like elementary school where you get a list and then you get to go buy everything at a store, uh, but you still typically will get a list of things you need, usually textbooks Mm -hmm. um, or different types of equipment, depending on what your major is. Um, For example, if you're going into like a STEM field, science, technology, engineering, and math, you may be required to get like a lab coat or something that you need for your classes, whereas other classes or other majors, you may not be required to get that. Um, So equipment and textbooks, a lot of times colleges will budget at least a thousand for that. Um, To be honest, I don't think I ever spent that much, but everyone is different with the books they're required to have um, and their major, which sometimes they require different materials. Um, So one way you can save money on textbooks is by waiting until after the first day of class to get your textbooks. Um, I know in my experience, I had a professor where when we got there the first day, even though there was a book listed on the syllabus that he gave us, we were told we actually didn't need one of them. So I wouldn't have had to spend money on that book had I known I wasn't actually going to need it. And if I can interject, that actually happened to me a lot too. So please, you know, wait until that first day. Also, if you're, if it's even a little confusing after that first day, you can just straight up go to the professor Mm -hmm. or teacher's assistant and ask, do I actually need to get this book? And they typically are going to level with you and be like, oh, yes, but you can get a different edition or no, you actually don't need it. I just had to include something. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Yeah, that actually happened to me too. I um, actually had a different edition of the book I needed and my professor was okay with me just using that one because it wasn't too different than the one he actually requested. Mm -hmm. Um, Another thing you can do is by rent or buying used books. Um, renting, you you know, kind of like a library book, you pay a fee, you have it for however long you need it, and then you give it back at the very end. Uh, you can rent new or used. It's all in personal preference. Uh, typically, used books are going to be a little less expensive. Um, and if you um, sometimes if you buy books, whether they're new or used, you are given the option to sell them back to wherever you bought it before. Um, that was something that I know some people at my college did. I did that once, Um, didn't get a whole lot back, but it still is money I didn't have before. Um, Another option you have is just by borrowing the books from other students. If you know someone else took that class and you need the same books, you can also see if your school library has a copy on reserve. Um, That would mean that they have a textbook that never leaves the library. Um, Many colleges have this, where if there's a textbook required for a class, they just have it in the library and students can check it out for like a few hours at a time do what they need to do, and then they just return it when they're done with it. Um, That was also something I did for, um, we needed a textbook really early on in the semester, um, and we hadn't known which textbook we needed, so that definitely helped a lot. Um, I know some people also recommend like Facebook Facebook groups that students uh, from that college may have where they're selling textbooks or trying to get rid of the textbooks they currently have. Online marketplaces are another thing that people may utilize without always you know, use caution with any online marketplace, really. Um, And I think that's mainly all I have to say about textbooks. I don't know if you want to add anything. Yeah. And, uh, you know, something that uh, I think we have a little bit of differing opinion on is that I personally would never buy from uh, the university's bookstore itself because sometimes they actually have their own one. And -hmm. the reason why I wouldn't do that is because they mark up their equipment and textbooks pretty significantly. Um, So I would go to instead like local bookstores still in the area, but not associated with the university. Uh, That saved me, I think, a couple hundred bucks every semester. 
Um, but I would also majority rent my textbooks because the idea of lugging around, you know, these $500 books for like however many years until I feel guilty and donate them, uh, just didn't really sit right with me. So I instead, you know, rented them online. And if you ever rent them off of like an online marketplace, they typically send you like a return label and everything. So it's very yeah. easy. Um, and I do want to address this uh, next question that came up. Um, so it's asking if a school can backdate the insurance waiver. Um, I would ask the financial aid office at your college. It will be different yeah. school to school. Um, I don't think U of I personally would do that, but that's just because I went there. Um, so I would ask the financial aid office, see if they're willing to work with you with that. Mm -hmm. So I know that isn't the answer most people yeah. want to hear, but <laughs> we're just trying to be as honest as possible. Yeah, so. yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah. is there anything else you want to add about equipment or textbooks? Um, honestly, something that was told to me is um, for a lot of those basic classes you're going to have, you might want not want to buy the textbook because you're probably just going to use it once and never look at it again. But once you start getting farther into your major classes, so for example, if you're a psychology major, once you start getting into those higher level psychology classes, at that point, that's when a lot of people actually start buying the books and wanting to keep them because it's something they might use in the future. Um, for example, um, I there was a specific book we had to get if we were psychology majors uh, and like how to cite stuff in papers. So that was one I actually bought because I knew I was going to need that year after year. Um, everyone is different though, but that was just personally something that I was told and that I saw that a lot people typically would rent books up until a certain point, then um, they might start buying them depending on what the class was. And I'd personally recommend uh, sharing your textbook with another uh, person in your class. That's actually yeah, how I met too. my partner. <laughs> and that's how you can meet friends if you ever are looking for more friends. So, um, but yeah, so we can move on to living expenses. Um, so when we're talking about living expenses, you know, as a college student, you're most likely going to just in general live a lot more frugal of a life than uh, kind of a typical person because you might be working part time instead of full time or your wages just may be lower. You know, of course, that's not always the case. Um, so that just in general reduces your living mm -hmm. costs. Um, but once again, with housing, you know, just make sure you're making the best plan. Sometimes they require you to be in dorms for the first year, and then you can kind of move out after that. So just make sure you know those options and research it. Um, for food, I would really recommend going to cheaper grocery stores rather than the more expensive ones. You know, of course, if you have dietary restrictions, don't change that. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I always uh, love those cheaper places. Uh, sometimes you have to bag your own groceries. But, you know, if you save a couple, like 20 bucks every time, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, also, buying in bulk can save you a lot of money. Um and just avoiding going out as much as possible. And when you do go out, try to be as intentional as possible. You know, maybe bring some coupons with you, um, split the check with some friends, um, go on like a happy hour kind of thing. Just try to find ways to save as much money as possible. And once again, just don't buy uh, takeout food every single day. And that should save you a significant amount of money. You can also look into different dining plans. Um, so if you're living on campus, meaning you're living in a dorm or in an apartment that's owned by the college you're at, they a lot, sometimes they just have the same dining plan for everybody. That was the case with my school. Everyone just got the same one. Uh, but sometimes you can choose which one you actually want. And it's always best to start small and go up. Um, mm -hmm. So, for example, if you know you're not going to need 20 meals a week, you can just or you're not going to need a ton of meals a week. Um, you could just buy the smallest dining plan. And if you run out, you can just buy another one um, rather than getting the most expensive one and trying to figure out what to do with all the money you have left over. Yeah. Um, another thing a lot of colleges will have are food pantries. That's definitely something a lot of colleges have started to do because um, they recognize maybe a lot of their students are food insecure or do qualify for um, getting food that way. And that's something many colleges have. Um, Either it's open to everybody or you may have to just fill out a form so that way they know you're coming or, or they know that you are like a regular customer. I've even seen a school that has a pet food pantry, so I don't know if it's a thing everywhere, but it they, pets are important too. So you may have find that at whatever uh, college you decide to attend or are attending. Yeah, and they may even have things like toiletries at some of them too. Um, and I also just want to say about food pantries, if you are struggling with food insecurity, don't feel ashamed about using food pantries. That is what your fees, like your mandatory fees that you pay towards the college go towards. So you are entitled to using that service if you really need it. I personally wish I'd used the food pantry, you know, when I was back in college, because I des definitely need to use it sometimes. Um, but I just didn't. Uh, so just make sure, you know, you're eating two to three meals a day. You know, you are eating as much as you need to. 
I volunteered at my campus food pantry in my freshman year of college and they had a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, they do have quite a bit of things that you can get at a food pantry. Yeah. And so next uh, we're going to move on to talking about entertainment. Yeah. The more fun things. Yeah. So um, when it comes to, like we talked about before, when you're in college, you're going to be living probably a more cheaper lifestyle just because you don't have a lot of money or you might not have a lot of money to spend or the money you do earn is going towards paying for the things like necessities. Um, but you're still a human. You're not a student all the time. You're going to want to find some stuff to do outside of class. And the good thing is a lot of colleges know this and they have a lot of things you can do for free or low cost. Um, for example, they might have movie nights at their school where it's either very low cost or it's free for everybody. Um, some schools have a bowling alley where you can go bowling for really, really low cost. Um, they also may have concerts, open mic nights, comedy nights, um, all for either free or low cost. And I've even seen some schools that do like excursions. So they might take a busload of students to a baseball game and you don't have to pay as much as you would if you were just going by yourself. Um, another thing you can do is just see what's in the community surrounding your college. I know where I went to school, there were a lot of state parks and a lot of nature trails around, and those are typically free. Um, so as long as you find a way to get there, they're typically free to just see everything. Um, and also like farmers markets or other things that your community has, because they know co college might be a huge part of that community and they want to do things that are for the people who live there and the people who are students and only there for part of the year. Yeah. And uh, some go to entertainment things that I did that were fairly low cost. Um, I actually did go to farmers markets just about every Saturday because they had uh, them in the town I was living in, Urbana. Um, they're very cute and very fun to go to and just look at mm -hmm. even if you don't buy anything. Um, just going on walks can also be entertaining, especially if you are at a really big campus, you know, just exploring it and getting to know the area can be very good. Um, and also being a part of clubs, uh, a lot of clubs on campus are either free or have very low annual fees. And there's mm -hmm. really a club out there for everyone. I know at UIUC, there was even a club for, I think, squirrel watching. Because uh, the, squirrels, yeah, cause the squirrels on campus are pretty big because uh, all the college students feed them and stuff. So you're going to be able to find a niche group. You're going to be able to be entertained. And just walking around and looking at posters can also mm -hmm. get you access to a lot more entertainment. Like they'll do movie nights or there's some guest lectures I went to when I was a college student that were actually pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, so there's, there's still a lot to do. Um, obviously, you still have to do homework, too. Yes. Um, but <laughs> if you're a college student, um, when you're like trying to make a budget, um, are really starting to try to build budgeting skills. Always include fun things. You're yeah. you're a human. You need to do other stuff other than like work and school. Um, mm -hmm. So always budget for like a little bit of, of fun things to do as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Next, we'll talk about transportation. So uh, yes, you do have to get around some somehow. Um, for many colleges, they it depends on the college because honestly, there are some that don't allow freshman students to have cars. Mm -hmm. um, some of them. Um, the school I went to, that wasn't really an issue. Everyone was pretty much allowed to have a car because they had a lot of students that commuted there. Um, but even if you're bringing a car to campus or thinking about it, it's important to just consider all the costs involved with that. You have tires, you have gas, you have emergencies, you have maybe replacing your windshield because there was a hailstorm. Um, also, sometimes people um, may accidentally damage your car, so you have to pay for that as well. Um, so those are all things to think of if you're thinking about bringing a car to campus. Um, I know not everyone has the option to not consider it because um, you may be working, you may live at home, um, or you may have a major that requires you to do an internship somewhere off campus. Yeah. And if there, you know, there are a variety of other ways to get around campus other than a car, just because once again, it can cost a lot. Mm -hmm. Also, parking fees are just, you know, pretty large in a lot of different schools. Um, so some other ways to get around uh, public transit, that's a really big one at a lot of colleges yes, you can either yes. get uh, free uh, public transit or com or like really reduced costs uh, if you show your college like card uh, to the bus driver. Um, also just biking, once again, walking, skateboarding. Uh, there was a guy on my campus who unicycled everywhere and a couple people who like rollerbladed or roller skated. Um, so you can be, you know, pretty creative with that. I mostly walked and biked. Uh, my partner skateboarded. Um, I don't know, Lauren, how you got around. I campus, pretty much just but, walked a lot yeah. most of the time. Um, but I've even seen people on scooters. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of college campuses actually have scooters you can rent now. 
uh, and bring all around town. Just make sure you're responsible with them and put them where they're supposed to be. Be respectful. Yeah, <laughs> make sure you put them where they're supposed to be. But even like the little scooters people would use as, as kids that aren't motorized, I've honestly seen that too. Yeah, yeah. People get pretty creative. And yeah. just know, <laughs> um, you know, if you are able-bodied, you're going to be walking around a lot. So I know mm-hmm. I average probably like 12,000 steps a day I during college. I kept so. track, but it was a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so once again, there you can have a car on campus, but I'd really encourage you to try these other cheaper ways to get around before you go to that, just because it, it can be a tremendous burden to a lot of college students. And even if you're not bringing a car to campus and you still need to get home for breaks, there's other ways to make that a little less expensive too. Um, I know a lot of colleges may have a bus that actually just takes students to where a lot of student uh, takes students to where many of them are from, and that might be their like lower cost of just buying a ticket on your own or um i don't think i've ever seen a free one but that's an option um i know trains are also a really big thing for a lot of college students that's how i got home all the time and the sooner you buy a ticket the cheaper it is because there's more seats available um and even carpooling with people if you know people that are around your area and they're going home then you can all carpool together maybe split uh the cost of snacks or gas or anything um, so there's even ways, if you're not bringing a car to campus, you still have to find ways to save money to get home. Yeah. Another way uh, to reduce costs in college is to utilize a lot of the services and resources on the campuses. Uh, so at a lot of places, there are healthcare and possibly even dental cl- clinics that you can go to. Um, some places may have like a cosmopolity, cosmetology school <laughs> uh, connected to it so you can get like cheap haircuts. Mm-hmm. Um also, there are financial counselors at a lot of, especially the big institutions, so you can talk to them and get money help. Um, I was actually a financial counselor in college, and I helped a lot of college students with that. Um, and then there may also be different tax prepping tools that are available to you for free. Like there might be the accounting students at the college yeah. that can help with that uh, through the VITA program is what it's called, V-I-T-A. Um, are there any other resources you can think of that would be um, That was pretty much it. Um, Another thing I would mention, and it's kind of like something you don't really think about, but um, if you do need to, I know most, a lot of places don't really use cash anymore. A lot of people aren't using cash anymore, but if you ever need to take out cash or use an ATM machine to check your balance for a debit card, uh, try to look for ones that are in network with your ATM card. Um, I know it's not always possible. I know for me it wasn't possible, so I always had to pay a little bit extra in fees, Um, but if you know that's something you might have to do, then um, try to look for ATMs that are in network with your bank or with your card so that way you're not paying a few extra dollars just to take out some cash to use at a farmer's market or at um, like booths that they might have set up at your college. There's actually something else I remembered. Uh, You can also get counseling and sometimes psychiatry services uh, for free or reduced costs on college campuses. So if that's something you think you're going to need, definitely look at that. Um, But something I also really want to stress to you guys is please, please see a financial counselor at your college campus before an issue arises. There were so many students who came to me, you know, in a moment where they were really deep in debt. Um, They had to pay off a lot of credit card debt or, you know, they were about to drop out because they didn't have enough money. So just meeting with one as soon as possible, um, you know, talking about your financial goals, any issues you're having that haven't become really big, you know, that can really uh, help you actually attain your college education. Um, and also, you know, I'm just saying that I was a financial planning major, so money's kind of always on my mind. Um, and ways you can find financial counselors is through extension offices, if there is a financial planning or finance department, uh, career services, just anything that is on your campus that is there to help students. You can typically ask someone, hey, is there someone I can talk to about, you know, money concerns? They'll be able to point you in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And so. the last point I'll make is um, when you're in college, a lot of times you're training to do or training to get a job in the field you're interested in. Uh, many colleges, if not all of them, have career services departments, um, or they have some variation of that name, but they do a very similar thing where they help students with their career planning. So um, a lot of time, a lot of thing, uh, college campuses now have started having a career closet where it's like professional clothes that you can borrow or even just take with you if you need something professional to wear for an interview or for um, for something related to your career in the future. Yeah. 
And also you can get student discounts at a lot of different restaurants and stores. Um, I would just go up to the cashier and ask, hey, I'm a college student. I have my ID. You mm -hmm. know, can I get a reduced cost? And even if they don't have something in the system, they might, you know, feel a little bad and maybe, you know, throw you a free drink or something. So it never hurts to ask if you are ever looking for resources. The worst that someone can say to you is no or oh, we don't actually do that. Yeah, and sometimes colleges may even have a whole list on their website anyway of like, here's places in our community where students can get discounts if they show their ID. Yeah. So I think that is all we had yeah. <laughs> um, for this. So um, we just remind, remind, remind you guys, um, there are other going to college uh, videos that will be on ISAC's YouTube channel. So definitely keep an eye out for those. We'll talk about a lot of things, um, maybe not us too, but we'll <laughs> talk about a lot of things that are really relevant to students who are thinking about going to college or who are in college or starting college in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, and with, with that, that's all we have. So if you have any questions, I know we have the chat open. Um, feel free to just maybe drop one in there um, if you have them. Um, but otherwise, uh, we wanna thank you guys all for attending today. Yeah, and while we wait just a couple seconds to see if anyone wants to put a question in the chat, uh, most of these going to college series uh, start at 2 p.m., just like they mm -hmm. did today. Yeah. So if that's any question. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, all right. I'm not seeing any other questions, so we are good to end. Okay, thank you all. Have a good day.